Strong is brought to you by Blickman Engineering, home of the top-tier brewing stand. Visit them online at BlickmanEngineering.com. Time for the beer radio you've been looking for. This is the show that dispels myths, tackles the toughest topics, and makes no apologies for geeking out on beer. Hosted by two guys that drink before they think, Jamil Zainashev and John Palmer. This is Brew Strong. Hey, howdy, hey, my brewing brothers and sisters. Greetings, greetings. Ah, yes. Uh, you and I are going to be at uh, GBF here pretty soon. Yes, yes, we are. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. At least I think I am. i got the exciting prospect of judging for the first time there ahead of me. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, I'm sure it'd be more work than I'm expecting. Oh, it is a miserable... Uh, trudge but i enjoy it <laughs> you know you, you you get to sit with a lot of uh your peers and people that yeah. you know you you're like oh you're such and such and so you, you need some nice chat and people that you haven't seen for a while and uh uh it is good experience um as good as a miserable good. trudge can be <laughs> yes <laughs> there are just worse like trudges. marriage <laughs> it's, it could be a good experience and a miserable trudge at the same time i'm just saying um <laughs> And then, uh, yeah, last time you and I were there together, I think uh, we were uh, acting as uh, restroom attendants. Uh, yeah, yeah. Restroom guides, yes. Oh, were you handing out uh, mints and uh, spraying people with cologne, you know, as they yeah, left? Yeah, <laughs> we were, they were, people were coming up to us. Yeah, yeah, actually, this was the first time we were at GABF together, I think. Right. Or the second time. The second time, because we were there before that. We mm-hmm. talked about the book, and then we did the book, and then uh, they were having us sign books, and... And people came up to us and goes, uh, where's, where's the bathroom? <laughs> we're like, uh, we're over that way. See that big wall yeah, over right. there? Because it, it, it was just like this big clear area. We were the only two people, you know, that weren't, you know, drunk and staggering by. And then, and then like another person came up, where's the restroom? <laughs> just like, yeah, over there. I mean, it was more than one. It was like two or three. Yeah. <laughs> Did anybody tip you? <laughs> no, no. Jerks. Well, the John and I shared a room together, so yeah, that'll yeah. tell you. That's not the tip I was referring to, but uh, uh, uh-huh, good times. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, yeah. well, we've had worse signing experiences, I think. <laughs> oh, we have. <laughs> so Cleveland was it? Or oh, Cleveland, right? Well, no, in Cleveland we did the uh, the IX Fest. Yeah, and we. we we got we, we got paid to go out to Cleveland and uh, open the IX Fest and uh, do a show there. Did we yeah. do one show or I two think, shows? I think we did two shows there. Right? Oh, yeah. you were there? Yes. Yeah, uh, that was, Justin, that was, Justin too. That was Scott's first. Oh, time that's with right. Us. That's right. And Scott was trying to like route me through Atlanta to save them like twenty five bucks on their on the flight. Yeah, to yeah. Cleveland. They they did that. I didn't. Uh, uh, yeah, they didn't yeah, ask yeah. permission, but Scott, I didn't tell them Scott's otherwise. Like, could you and John and four homeless people share a hotel room? I'm like, no. What, do you hate the homeless? <laughs> yeah. Ah, yes. Yes, I recall. I recall. That was and back then, in the day when kept, Scott didn't know I lived in Southern California. <laughs> and no, I, I didn't. Kept, I kept telling him, I'm like, no, no, no. And he, I, 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 I could imagine him on the other end going, what the fuck is the matter with this guy? What a, what a goddamn princess. Prima donna. You know, he, he, you know and I'm thinking to myself... I tell you, he has obviously not done this for long, because once you've done it a few times, you're just like, no, I will not sleep with your you know, brother-in-law in his twin bed at your home to save you money on a hotel. Yeah, look at If you that. want you me know. to come, you pay for a hotel room. No, a sing- no, no, a single hotel room. No, 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 not, not the, the hostel. No, a actual like hotel. I'm a broadcaster. I'm not a travel agent. Right, right. I'm sorry. Well, that's what I told you. Let me let me book the flight. Yes. Well, you from know? now from then on. Right. 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 Yes. 
Yeah, he learned like, his lesson well. Yeah. And then it's and, like, oh, this flight, it's got four connections. We got it on a price line. Uh, it does take 26 hours to get to uh, Denver. You just go but, qu- quickly uh, through Bermuda. Right, right. And then that you'll be there like, in a flash. Like, I am not going to spend, you know, an entire day of my time to save somebody 50 bucks. It's like, look, I'll pay the 50 bucks myself so I don't have to spend the entire day doing this. Ah, how do we get off on this track? I, I tend to rant when I drink. And that's one problem with the hop grenade here is I got like 21 really great beers on <laughs> And the list is really good. Um, and there's really like some spectacular beers on there like uh, the uh, Heretic Taffable. That uh, is spectacular. Uh, Boy, is that beer tasting there great. There you go. Holy yeah. moly. And uh, So do you restrict yourselves to California only or what's the story there? They just get whatever sounds good. Yeah, there's plenty of California, but plenty from elsewhere. I mean, there's like 100 bottles in addition to the tap, so there's beer from uh, every corner of the globe, including, I think, the airport in Bermuda where Jamil flew flew through. (laughs) That's right. Nice. I think think the only requirement (coughs) would be that they've got some heretic beer on. We have more than one. (laughs) Lots and lots of heretic here. Uh, No, but... uh, And I tell you, it makes it tougher to do the show. It makes it better to do the show because... Like, in between shows, I go out, and I'm just like, ah, well, it looks good. Oh, yeah, I'll have one of those. Yeah, thanks. And, uh, you know, it is it is quite awesome. But, I am, uh, I'm loving it here. There's, like, a uh, bathroom, and I don't need a key to get in it. And uh, cool. it's got, like, you know, a light that works, and uh, I don't have to touch the door to open it to go out once I have peed and washed my hands. I don't have to touch anything. Uh, what else? Um, yeah. do, do you get to observe chiropractic? There is free parking here. This is the thing about freaking Martinez. Is that, uh, you know, it's parking around there. It was I, I spent like four bucks every time I went to a show just in parking. And, uh, you know, unless we scheduled a, a, a show just right, parking, I, I, you know, miserable. If you wanted free parking, you had to walk like six blocks through the crack addicts. Here, it's half a block away. There is like a four-story parking structure that's entirely free. And no matter how busy it gets, yeah, you may have to drive up a few levels, but you, you get free parking every time. It's like four hours of free parking. And the people you have to get through on the way uh, are only are, pot addicts. There, there's no crap. There was one homeless woman with, pushing a stroller, and she was like changing her socks in the in the parking structure. But... The other people in the parking structure were police. So, um, yeah, there's police cars parked in there, and, you know, it's actually, yeah, it's fine. Um, yeah, very short walk and uh, free parking, great beer, uh, beautiful place, nice outdoor seating. Um, yeah, man. I'm loving it down here. I got to tell you, John, it's been real interesting uh, hanging around with Buzz Jamil because now instead of him uh, <laughs> b- basically leaving during the outro for the show, uh, he sits around for an hour afterwards and we, and we talk politics. It's, right. it's, it's I, good I, fun. I, 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 like, I like argue with Scott. <laughs> and then, uh, and uh, yeah, you know, that's that's the way that's the way it goes. Very nice. Well, next time I will definitely be there. Yes, and you would have. I mean, you know, you, yeah. you, you fly in for, you know, most of the shows, and, uh, yeah, you know, you couldn't make this one. That's all right. Yep. Um, not, not, not that big a deal. I'm sure uh, our fine host, uh, John, John Blickman, uh, won't be too upset that you weren't here in person as part of your contract for the Brewing <laughs> Network. Right, right. Now, he, he, is, he is also familiar with uh, planes that don't take off on time. So I'm well, sure he'll cut me some slack there. Perhaps Blickman Engineering should be making planes. There you go. Because I'll tell you, you know, he makes stuff that works. And, uh, you know, that's one of the things that I admire about uh, John is he is, uh, I actually got a chance to uh, kind of help out in a, uh, like a focus group that they were doing on uh, nice. a new product. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, they they invest time and uh you know money and effort into um i think he was willing to fly me out there i had to do it by skype but he was you know willing to fly me out there uh he's willing to invest in the design and development he treasures that aspect of making a product they don't just go well this might work oh that's fine and then slap something together and you know start selling it to you 
and then worry about it later. You know, they really put a lot of effort into the design phase and the, the uh, you know, creating something that's actually going to work and work the way you need it. That's what makes separates them, I think, from the rest. That's why get yourself over to BlickmanEngineering.com. Blickman with two N's. Engineering with an E and a G and a dot com. And uh, check them out. They, they, they post a lot of cool stuff on their website. And, and uh, if you get a chance, send an email to John Blickman and say, hey, uh, thanks a bunch for paying for this show for eight years, so I don't have to. Um, I'm sure he would appreciate a kind note, and I'm sure you appreciate the free shows. So check them out, BlickmanEngineering.com. All right, so, John, what are we doing today? You've got uh Well, we some got some questions. Q&As to do. And uh, I've got a great one to some questions here from uh, our email. Uh, you can email us at brewstrong at thebrewingnetwork.com. And is there ask a your questions, and we will do our best to answer them. Is there a theme, or is this random? Pot- this seems Puri. to be random, pulled together on my way back from the airport. <laughs> pulled and, uh, out of the nether regions, John's nether regions. <laughs> All right. Let's do this. Let's take a short break. And when we come back, we will have uh, questions pulled from John's nether regions right after this. Tonight. The night. We bring the creature to life, Dr. Blitzenstein? Yes, J.P. Lord. Everything is perfect for my next fermented creation. My father, the storm is too far away. We'll never have enough power to isomerize the creature's alpha acid. <laughs> yes, J.P. Lord. We will. For I have in my possession the Tower of Power. Blickman's new Tower of Power is the evolution of automation. Control hot liquor, sparge, and mash temps like a pro. The Tower of Power is a high-quality gas-fired rim system that works with your current brewing setup. With ultra-precision, the tower can hold your mash to one-half of a degree Fahrenheit. Precision and repeatability. The Tower of Power is the answer to automatic, fast ramp times. See more at BlickmanEngineering.com. Bring your next creation to life with the Tower of Power. Dr. Blickman's with the Tower of Power, you can probably give me an afternoon at the pub to Enjoy a pint? Don't be silly, J. Peter. We have beer to brew. Since the first time the Brewing Network microphones turned on, more beer was behind it. More Beer sponsors the programming on the BN because, like you, they love brewing. And like the Brewing Network, they love sharing their knowledge. MoreBeer.com isn't just a website to place your next equipment or ingredient order. MoreBeer.com also gives you access to free beer information that will make you a better brewer. Go to MoreBeer.com and click into the Learning Center. You'll find podcasts, technical facts, video tutorials, and more, including access to The Buzz, more beer social network of more than 5,000 members. And some of them might even be crazier about beer than you are. Get over to morebeer.com today and take advantage of the buzz, the forum, the learning center, and make sure you're signed up to receive the newest More Beer catalog. More Beer, bringing you absolutely everything for beer making. Hey, dude, you know what beer this is? Oh, uh, no, all the labels are falling off. Yeah, or the ink is run. Well, if it's the pale ale, you're good, but stay away from the quote-unquote Belgian. Oh, man, this guy needs to get some grog tags. Grog tags are reusable, right-on, wipe-off, commercial-grade bottle labels for your brew. The guys at Grog Tag are homebrewers. They wanted great-looking, sturdy labels for your bottles, buckets, carboys, kegs, and growlers. They also wanted a label that not only looks good, but can be easily removed and reapplied during bottling without that nasty glue residue being left behind. No residue, water-resistant, and ice chest approved. Grog tags stay on in water or an ice chest, and they stay legible. Visit grogtag.com to customize your label or coaster from dozens of different templates for free and see how awesome your bottles can look. Oh, it's that pseudo-Belgian. Yeah, we're getting him some grog tags, dude. Grog tag. At least your beer will look good. Grogtag.com. When I order a beer, I want my server to know more about it than I do. I want someone who enjoys good beer and loves helping others enjoy it, too. I want someone who knows how to pour a perfect pint for every beer style. I want a Cicerone. 
The Cicerone Certification Program is creating the type of people who help you enjoy great beer. Home brewers and craft beer lovers know beer is more flavorful and complex than ever, and it takes some serious knowledge to store and serve beer right. Cicerone's No Beer. There are three levels in the Cicerone Program. Certified Beer Server, Certified Cicerone, and Master Cicerone. Cicerones are truly the sommeliers of beer. The best beer locations have a certified Cicerone on staff. Relaxed and unpretentious. Cicerones are tested on storing and serving beer, beer styles, flavor and tasting, the brewing process and ingredients, and pairing food with beer. Learn more about your next beer guide at Cicerone.org. Certified Cicerone, because it takes top talent to present a perfect pint. All right, BN Army, it's trivia time. What's the only homebrew shop with over 1,000 recipe kits, $4.99 shipping on orders over 100 bucks, and is also home of the Wolf Shirt? The one and only answer is Austin Homebrew Supply. For over 20 years, they've specialized in creating recipes such as the best-selling Texas Blonde Ale, Apocalypso, Hot Bomb 2.0, and Double Chocolate Stout. And they just recently unveiled their small grain kits that produce one gallon of beer. Visit Austin Homebrew homebrew.com to browse their extensive catalog of equipment and ingredients. They also have mini clone recipes of your favorite commercial beers. They're the exclusive retailer of Brew Vent Yeast Fuel as well, Yeast Nutrient, and the all-new Bodybuilder. Follow Austin Homebrew Supply on Google Plus to participate in video hangouts on popular brewing topics. So visit austinhomebrew.com today and make sure you sign up for their weekly email with news and specials. Austin Homebrew Supply, austinhomebrew.com. Back to your hosts, Jamil Zanashef and John Palmer. Putting the testicles in technical. This is Brew Strong. All right, we're back. Don't forget, yep. you can call in with your questions at 888-401-BEER or 888-401-2337 and get your questions uh Live on the air to John Palmer and myself here today. All right. So there you go. All right. First question, Mr. Palmer, out of your nether regions. All righty. Well, this one uh, is from djsdjs44 at hushmail.com. And uh, he says simply, hi, guys. I like the ease and convenience of extract brewing. My beers are good, but what suggestions do you have for getting the maximum quality from extract-only brewing? Thanks. Uh, and uh, you know, I, I I decided to answer this one first. Um, it's a good basic um, question, um, and you and I uh, do not shy from basic questions. Uh, you know, people start home brewing all the time. We're basic kind of guys. Yep. And uh, I think um, one of the best places to start is sanitation. Um, and we've talked about that quite a bit. Um, proper sanitation to avoid in, you know, for something fermenting your beer that you don't intend to ferment it. Um, but uh, that naturally seg- segues into fermentation itself. And, Jamil, what is your favorite theme when it comes to fermentation? Uh, temperature control, yep. pitching rates, um, you know, use, uh, if, if, you, if you have to use dry yeast, uh, make sure you are proofing the yeast first, um, because otherwise you're throwing in 50% dead yeast, which is no good for your beer. Yep. Rehydrate uh, I, it. Yeah, I prefer liquid yeast, but, uh, you know, make a starter, get a good pitching rate. Firm, the, the biggest thing you can make happen. No matter what, all, everything else staying the same, fermentation temperature control if you don't have that. Yes, yes. that uh, That's what I anticipated you saying, and I, I agree fully. Um, so uh, if you're just getting started in home brewing and extract brewing, fermentation temperature control is key. Um, I just had a friend of mine that had taken up brewing uh, last week ask me pretty much that same question. He's like, is this really a big deal? And I said, I told him that uh, I don't think it can really be overstated. Yeah, it makes a uh, world of difference. I've got yeah. uh, some friends uh, that I've met since I've been in Fairfield, and they're home brewers, and uh, 
convinced them to you know get into the fermentation temperature control, and they're like, "Wow, yeah, that actually makes a huge difference. <laughs> like yeah. my beer is so much better." Yep, that uh, that that'll do it there. You know, uh, and, and there's the common things like you're saying, sanitation, uh, full wort boil. That's a that's always a nice one. Yep. Um, you know, freshness and, and, of extract, and it's you know it's it's cheap and easy. Yeah, freshness of extract. You know, I do these uh, brew your own magazine columns, and in every column uh, in the extract, I, I I put this line in that says, "All right, so they want to know what I use for when I brew beers, or what you know, what brand I I use on everything." Yeah, and I always say, "But if you have uh, you know a fresher, better example, use that." You know, use fresh Trump's brand yeah. all the time. And if you can't get, you know, fresh liquid extract, use dry extract because it's probably uh, a little more stable. Yeah, I agree. I want John's job. <laughs> Jamil <laughs> speaks his wisdom and uh, John nods his head. It's, it's a good gig. <laughs> well, you know, we're we're... We're on the same page. Yep. Definitely. Yeah. All right. Well, here's another one. Um, this one's from Marcelo. And he says, uh, hello, guys. Is it possible that a big amount of flaked oats in the grain bill diminishes the head stability? He says, I always have a good head formation and stability, and I recently made a wit with 50% barley and 50% flaked oats. The recipe called 50% flaked wheat, but I didn't have it on hand at the time, so I decided to give flaked oats a try. Had stuck filtration, <laughs> but with some patience, I made it through. Now the beer is done and carbonated. It's good, but the foam disappears completely and immediately. I've made this recipe twice before with flaked wheat, and the foam was stable. Same dry ease, pitching rate, and fermentation temperature profile. Same original gravity, 1038, and same final gravity, 1001. After this, I recalled that I had a similar issue with an oatmeal stout with 12% flaked oats, which I had had the bad idea to pass in the blender. <laughs> hmm, okay. Same problems with filtration and head retention. I was wondering if the oils that give that silky effect to the flaked oats can be too much in a recipe. Um, and I think, yes, that is probably the culprit. What do you think? Well, well I'm not 100% <laughs> sure here because, um, yeah, you know, I was thinking that, I mean, you know, I guess oats are a more oily grain. Yeah. Um, depending on how they're processed, yeah, right. I mean, you know, uh, I assume you know it's it's essentially uh, roller pressed uh, flake grains. Um, the thing is, he says fifty percent, and then he says twelve percent. Twelve percent is not an issue, right? Twenty percent is not an issue. Fifty, if- I would question. You know, I I I think it's something else. Um, yeah, I'd question his starch conversion at fifty percent. Right. Um, but uh, I'm not I'm not sure it's the oils. But plus this, um, you can add oil to beer mm-hmm. uh, when it's fermenting, and the yeast will take up a lot of oil. And you, you'd be surprised how much oil they'll take up. Um, hmm, it, okay. it, it, excessive oils, it, excessive lipids will uh, uh, cause uh, can cause some uh, staling issues. Yeah. Um, but um, you know, I, I I think you know the initial head retention, not necessarily. You know. Um, hmm. Yeah. Certainly, I'm excess lipids, including oils, will destroy head retention. Mm-hmm. Um, they allow everything to wet quickly. But um, now you say you, you when you've added oils in fermentation, do you mean like uh, chocolate, cocoa? What kind of oils yeah, are you, you referring you to? You can you know dump olive oil. You know all that that big oh, okay silly rave about olive oil in and replacing oh, yeah. oxygen a while back. Um, uh, you can add a substantial amount of olive oil and. Uh, not not running into issue at Heretic. We actually use a uh, canola oil based uh, uh, anti foam um, to uh, to our beers, and actually okay. we yeah we have great head retention. 
Um, so, and we had, you know, you know, a bit. I, you know, it's uh, 250 mils per 30 barrels, which is, you know, not that much. Oh, but, yeah, um, you know, the, the amount that's in, you know, uh, five pounds of oats. Right, compared to yeah, a half a cup or a full cup almost. Right. So yeah. I'm I'm thinking, um, yeah, I'm 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 not convinced. It, it potentially could be, but since he said fifty percent, and he also saw it in a beer with twelve percent oats. No, 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 right. that's not your problem. You got some other issue then. Hmm. Yeah, I, I guess I, I would agree with you there. Yeah. Right. I mean, you know, there's, there's, the, or, you know, or it's two different problems. You know? Mm-hmm. I don't know. We don't know. Don't know. Yep. None. But we, we don't think it's, I, I don't think it's the oats. Okay. At yeah, least good not information in, all cases. in the email, but uh, it is hard to say without, for one, tasting the beer and mm-hmm. asking a lot of other questions. It's weird, though. It sounds like that's the only thing that was different, right, from batch to batch? Yeah. Well, but see, he's Sorry. like, oh, one of them's 12%, and I had problems. One of them's 50%, I have problems. I, I, I'll guarantee you can use 20% and not have any problems whatsoever. Hmm. Uh, you know, I would, I would probably tag it more to fermentation issues or something like that. Or, you know, a lack of a clean, beer clean glass or, um, you know, some problem along the you know the serving process or something like that uh you know that that's more likely the issue mm-hmm. okay yeah you want to uh, do one from the uh, chat room and yeah uh, sounds break good it up a little bit this one is from uh double helix uh he says Scott needs to learn how to scroll up. Okay, hey, Mouse, I have a question. It might be off. Uh, Chad, Chad Jacobson mentioned on uh, his show on this session that uh, Brett can interact with alpha acids and prevent it from oxidizing. Uh, also, it is known that dark malts have antioxidant effects as well. Therefore, would a Brett Black IPA tend to last a lot longer due to the additive antioxidant effects? Hmm. Yes and no. Um... You know, uh, sometimes, you know, too much of a good thing. But I will say Brett really does, uh, you know, uh, it, it tends to, uh, you know, be very good at uh, preventing oxidation. Um, you know, the only problem with that is um, Brett can have a, a bitterness to it itself. And then, you know, the black malt and then, you know, the IPA, I think. Yeah. You know, you're going to end up with a, a very unpleasant beer just off of that. <laughs> sounds like an unpleasant combination. Mm-hmm. I could be wrong, but it sounds unpleasant. Yeah, Brett in the early stages always has a starts off kind of phenolic, and uh, I I just don't like those flavors myself. Mm-hmm. So you know, I've had you know uh, good breweries uh, versions of say like Belgian stouts and um, Belgian black IPAs kind of thing and. Uh, you know, if you like those kind of flavors, then they may appeal to you, but they they don't to me. I, I'm into the to the extent that I I almost don't care whether it's oxidized or not. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, yeah. So there's, yeah, it may not be oxidized, but it could be unpleasant for other reasons. Uh, yeah. You know, Brett will produce you know phenolics uh, under certain circumstances. Under certain certain circumstances, it won't. It's interesting because. Um, you know, you can, uh, uh, you know, pitch, you know, enough Brett to where you can actually get a fairly clean ferment. Oh, yes, yes. And then, I mean, you know, you can pitch, yeah. you know, different conditions, and it will it will produce a, a very interesting wide range of uh, characters. So, um, yeah, interesting. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, our answer is, I suppose, that... Could be the fact, but uh, would you really want to drink it? So go ahead and try it, and then let us know. Yep. That's, I, that's I guess the my final comment is I wouldn't brew it that way solely to uh, you know try to improve flavor stability. I'd brew it that way if you like those flavors. I wouldn't. I wouldn't worry so much about the antioxidant effect. Um, if you see what I'm saying, you know, br- brew it. 
brew that beer because you like uh, the main flavors of the beer, not because you're trying mm-hmm. to improve flavor stability. I think that's an excellent point. Yeah, brew what you brew what you like, and then try and do that well versus trying to brew something. But I think it's a a good uh, creative good creative way to to think of it, though. Sure. And I'll yeah. tell you, you know, uh, if you have good creative ideas, one of the, the cool things is being an AHA member because you can share those creative ideas with other AHA members in the AHA forum. They've got a great forum, very active on the yep. AHA website. They've also got the Zymergy magazine. They've got the pub discount program, which you can use here at the Hop Grenade or, uh, you know, at Heretic Brewing or many other breweries around the area. We all tend to support the AHA. And uh, you can... Uh, uh, get into the AHA uh, conference, the AHA rallies, which are free, and you can get uh, you know a lot of a lot of great benefits out of the AHA. Plus, you know, it's an organization that kind of looks for uh, what's going out, uh, what's going on for uh, uh, homebrewers everywhere. So, great, great organization. Sign up, uh, AHA uh, American Homebrewers Association. Uh, uh, and you can sign up through the uh, Brewing Network website, thebrewingnetwork.com, find the AHA logo, click on that, and a little slice goes back to the Brewing Network. It helps pay for shows like this. Tell you what, let's take a short break. When we get back, we'll talk to the blind guy from Greensboro right after this. <laughs> A few things happened 30 years ago. Arfanet migrated to TCPIP, and the Internet was born. Revenge of the Jedi was renamed Return of the Jedi and opened in theaters. Mila Kunis and Emily Blunt were born, beginning a rad fantasy in my mind. But all of that pales next to the fact that HopTech opened its doors and began blowing homebrewers right out of their mash tuns. HopTech doesn't fuck around. Real people shipping awesome shit straight to you. Their new website is fast and easy to navigate. Or just call 800-379-4677 and let badass bitch Jade and Bruin brother Roberto blow their warm load of customer service all over you. So visit the site or visit the store in Dublin, California and support those that support you. Get your brewing on at hoptech.com. Are you a member of the American Homebrewers Association? Well, you should be. Members of the AHA can focus on brewing beer, and the AHA takes care of the rest. The American Homebrewers Association advocates on behalf of homebrewers like you to legalize the hobby in all 50 states and make sure that beer laws make sense. Plus, there are many great benefits that come with your AHA membership, like AHA member deals that give you awesome deals at bars, restaurants, breweries, and more. Zymergy Magazine and Zymergy for tons of articles, how-tos, easy-to-follow recipes, and news about the hobby you love, and access to the members-only content on homebrewersassociation.org. But the AHA can't do it without your support. Join today so the American Homebrewers Association can keep fighting for your homebrewing rights. Visit homebrewersassociation.org or join now from the homepage of the Brewing Network website. Relax. Don't worry. It's the American Homebrewers Association. First Amendment. Watch out! Do you like beer? They make beer. Watch out! Do you like friends and fun? They make friends and fun. Watch out! Do you still like to have a good time? The 21st Amendment. Watch out! The 21st Amendment in San Francisco, located at 563 Second Street, two blocks from the building where baseball is seen and played. Try their beers in the pub or try them in the can. Featuring... Monk's Blood. Made with Mio Monk. Watch out! So why not have the best time of your life? Go to the 21A and Sean O'Sullivan will personally greet you with a can of... Monk's Blood. The 21st of... Watch out! This advertisement is not in any way affiliated nor associated with the 21st Amendment Bar and Pub, nor its subsidiaries or affiliates. This telecast is not copywritten by the 21st Amendment for the private use of the brewing network. Any use of this telecast without Jamil Zanishev's consent is prohibited. Suck a 
Hey, my Bruin brothers and sisters. This is Jamel Zanisha, and I want to tell you about Heretic Evil Twin. You might be familiar with my homebrew recipe, which uses massive late hopping to create a balance between the malty sweet and the hoppy bitter, along with an outrageous malt and hop character. I wanted a beer with the same bold hop and malt character, so we played around with the homebrew recipe until we were able to make a great commercial version, too. We've created a beer rich in malt character, full of caramel, toast, biscuit, and an ever-so-subtle roast note. On top of that, we piled in an insane amount of citra and Columbus hops at the end of the boil, as well as in dry hopping. This damn-the-cost approach to hopping gives Heretic's Evil Twin a great blast of citrus and tropical fruit that can't be matched by any other hop. The result is a bold, malty, hoppy, but easy-drinking beer. This is our top seller, our flagship beer, and I couldn't be prouder of it. Cheers. To find Heretic Beers near you, click on Find Some at hereticbrewing.com. Williams Brewing is your online resource for prompt delivery of quality home brewing supplies. Since 1979, Williams Brewing has offered the finest equipment and the freshest ingredients, backed by the best customer service in the business. New items include the Big Oxygen Kit for economical wart aeration using common welding oxygen tanks and the Unistat line of external thermostats for easy control of both electric heaters and refrigerators. In addition, They've just mashed their new oatmeal stout malt extract. So you can make those tasty winter oatmeal stouts and porters without mashing. Go to williamsbrewing.com today and browse their vast selection. That's williamsbrewing.com. Orders placed by 4 p.m. Pacific Time weekdays ship the same day. Brewing is easy. The Williams way. Back to the two guys that know how to turn beer into beer. This is Brew Strong. All right, we're back. We're uh, enjoying the the awesomeness of the hop grenade. <laughs> Meaning, you know, beer just like appears like magic off of a uh, 21 beer list. Nice. Uh, just, uh, John, you got to get down here. I do, I do. Uh, the, the, the plane, you know, you should have, you should have just bought yourself a new, uh, you know. G6. Well, you know that was the plan, yeah. and because it's Friday afternoon, uh, everything the store was, was full. closed. Ah, uh, there you go. You couldn't yeah. buy a, a new jet in time. No, hmm. and we we're. I mean, I was looking at LAX, Ontario, John Wayne, San Francisco, Sacramento. You know, San Jose. And People look at they're shocked that we're on the radio here. Yeah. <laughs> and they're just like, oh, wow, look at that. They're on the radio. What are those guys doing in there with headphones and microphones? And they're like, really? Do I have to listen to this? Yeah, you know, a note yeah, to uh, any, anybody out there that may be thinking about opening a, a beer bar or really any business, just put something like this in there with an on-air sign. You don't have to have a show. Just put a studio in, and you'll attract attention. Right, yeah. <laughs> you sit in there talking to nobody, and people will be like, ooh, what's going on? And just yeah, throw three Giebers in the uh, in the room with headphones, drinking beer. And That's it. Just like, what the heck are those guys doing? Yeah. Great marketing. Mm-hmm. Indeed. All right, you guys want to talk to uh, Blind Guy here? Yeah, yeah, let's talk to Blind Guy. Blind Guy. Hi, guys. Back for more abuse. Hey, <laughs> okay. I know both you guys. I know both you guys are cooks, and I got this idea on work, uh, for starter, for storage, um, from storing stock for soups. And I wanted to bounce this off because I wasn't sure whether this is a safe idea or not. Um, but making up a, a huge batch when you do your starter stuff and freezing it and then storing it, I mean, even keeping it in a, in a plastic bag or something so it's kept separate from the rest of the stuff in the freezer, but freezing it into ice cubes and storing it like that until you're ready to use it Crank it out when you need it, chuck it in the pot, melt down as much as you need. Yeah, it will work, um, you know, and then you avoid, you know, problems with things like botulism and all that. Um, uh, the only issue is you got to heat it up, you know. Yeah. At the end. Yeah. But, uh, it's just yeah, the yeah. pressure cooker. Pressure right. cooker isn't cheap. I mean, it's that's an expensive way to go. It's the best way to go. But yeah, that, that's not that, that much. Those aren't things aren't. Well, that's a couple hundred if you find a good one. No. They're scary, man. No, they're no, scary. No. <laughs> you, 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 you could you could get yourself a uh, go with the American brand. Yeah. Um it's like eBay it or something milled milled aluminum, 
And yeah, yeah, you could you you know depending how big a one you want, um, they're not they're not too bad. Even the the biggest one with like the that labs use with the electric element on the bottom. Right. I mean, there right. those might be a couple hundred, but you can just get a pot, put it on your stove. Yeah. Um, and the nice thing is, it's all room temperature and liquid when you're ready to go. But no, yeah, you set it to what about twelve, right? You usually set it on twelve or something like that. Isn't that what it usually ends up being? Or is that too high? Twelve. I usually go to a yeah. Oven. There's a there's a little gauge you can set it on, or some of them have a little oh. gauge that you can set it on that will determine how high. Oh, uh, f- you know, f- what your f- f- fifteen pounds of pressure. Gotcha. That takes you to two fifty, gotcha. and then your okay. uh, you your um, sterile sterile after about twenty three minutes of yeah. of fifteen psi, um, yeah. which is you know same thing an autoclave does all that, um, <clears throat> but you know I I, I think. You know, you're, let's get back to your your actually Ice, very yeah. good suggestion. Uh, thinking yeah. outside the box, because uh, you know, you, if you freeze the wort, it doesn't matter what the pH is. If you freeze it, you're not going to grow botulism in there. There is still right. you know, possibly some activity, minimal activity from uh, you know other things, but uh, you know, at, at that temperature, it's it's essentially zero. Right. So yeah, no, but that's you would a good idea. You would. You would definitely bring it back to a boil, or would you just heat it up and use it for a start? I was, I, I would bring it back to a boil after melting it, but I suppose if yeah. it really has slowed it down that much, you could just melt it and use it, right? You could. Um, <clears throat> you know, it depends on how much bacteria and such you've picked up in, in the rest of your process of transfer and, and cooling right, down right. and freezing and all that. Yeah. But um, if you boiled it, yeah, you're good. But if you're going to boil it, then... You know, why go through all that hassle? What I would do, you know, is just, you know, it's uh, 10 mils water to 1 mil uh, by weight of uh, yeah, yeah. of uh, DME, you know, and just boil it and, and do that. Yeah, um, yeah. Then it's right there fresh, yeah. Right, I was just thinking, right. in a hurry, you know, waking something up, cup of, toss a couple ice cubes in the pot, you know, bring it up, you're good to go. That, that right, quick, right. You know? Yeah, you could you could have that. You know, maybe freeze it in the you know an algae bottle and and something like yeah. that. And then uh, you know you, you just take it out the night before. And you know if you if you yeah. yeah I mean yeah. you know no I I think that's good creative thinking. Okay, here's another creative idea that I haven't heard you talk about. At least if if I ha- if you have I've missed it somehow. The hopping during knockout. Well, that's that's uh, whirlpool hopping. No, 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 no. I'm not. I'm talking about after whirlpool. I'm talking about going from whirlpool to chiller and hopping while the wart is still between 150 and 90 degrees. Yeah, it's kind of kind of uh, well, you know, um, like a hop jack. Yeah. Yes, you know, hop back. Yeah, kind of like it would be like a hop back. Yeah, but, hop back's but done you're, hotter yeah. usually. It's done yeah, with, but see, if we're boil. talking, we're talking about aroma and flavor. We're talking about the oils, not not the uh, alpha acids. We want the oils, and most of, I think yeah. myrcene's uh, volatile at one fifty, isn't it? Yeah, I think you know. So what you're suggesting is, you know, um, extreme hot burst. Chill, chill down your your volume for it down to below one fifty. And right. then At run it, and then hop. run it through right. a hop back, or you know, then dump in a bunch of hops. Oh, that, yeah. And then chill yeah. it the rest of the way to the fermenter. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I could see you know possibly getting some benefit from that as well. Okay. Yeah. All right. Hey, hey good. Creative, I heard it there. Good creative thinking. <laughs> yep. Being blind, you you know, you're probably uh, doing a lot less uh, internet porn. I mean, not. I mean, you still do some. Matter, no, but. dude. I. I my, it's all by the bumps for me, and there's four that matter. And believe me, I have lots of fun. Well, there's <laughs> <laughs> well, there's got to there's gotta be some good audio internet porn, yes, I'm right? Sure. I mean, you know, have you ever shut your eyes and listened to audio porn? <laughs> well, yeah. you might as well listen to The Simpsons. Uh, it's, it's hey, horrible. hey, hey! Don't be no. don't be hacking on that Marge. She's pretty sweet. No. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm sure the uh, the mm, gets blind guy off, you know. <laughs> no, actually, actually, I want to throw this word in here. I want to throw this word in here, both of you, and I know you get it a lot. Masturbation. But I'll tell you what, I lost, I lost the. Ba- <laughs> Speaking of masturbation, if you're interested in masturbation, check out Adam and Eve. Dying. Okay, all right, all right. Thanks, blind guy. <laughs> we appreciate the call. Jesus Christ! <laughs> oh my God! Well, speaking of which, uh, we do have that fine sponsor at me. <laughs> Good segue, baby. Blind guy, you're the man. There you go. And you know, for a limited time only, you go in there with the offer code Jamil, J-A-M-I-L. You're going to put one thing in your shopping cart. You're going to get 50% off that one item, right? Then they're going to give you a free extra gift. They're going to give you a free shipping on everything. And you get to choose three free adult DVDs. It's not just the bottom of the barrel leftover crap DVDs. You actually get to choose from genres such as anal, amateur, Asian, big breasts, big butts, bisexual, chunky, coeds, fetish, gay, interactive, POV, lesbian, milfs, etc. So use the off code Jamel, J A M I L, at adamandeve.com. You can even do it from your mobile phone, and you're going to get 50% off the one item. That's all you're paying for. Then you get free shipping, you get a free extra gift, so central I can't mention it, and you get the three free DVDs from categories that you're of your choosing. So uh, check it out, adamandeve.com. Use off code Jamel, J-A-M-I-L. All right. Uh, okay. So one more question? No, I want to interrupt real quick. Speaking of DVDs, <laughs> yes. I wanted to let everybody know that Brad Smith and I of Beersmith mm-hmm. have put together two porno. How to Brew DVDs. Mm-hmm. Um, one is the extract brewing process, and the other is the all grain brewing process. And uh, the all grain one should come out this fall. The extract one is currently um, available. Um, you can go to beersmith.com slash DVD and find order details there. You can get it online off Vimeo either buy or rent, and I believe Amazon is carrying it as well. So if you have any friends that are interested in getting into home brewing and want to see you know, high-quality DVD uh, featuring myself and Brad Smith uh, going through the process, uh, check them out. All righty. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's take a short break. When we get back, we're going to talk to Mo Brewer from Kansas City after this. to the city. It's in ruins. Only one man has the ancient knowledge to restore civilization. Uh, I need a drink. Oh no, the liquor store has been ransacked. You looking for beer, stranger? (laughs) Boy, all the liquor got drunk up in the first 25 minutes of the apocalypse. Wait, there's still some bottles over... Oh, no. Those are non-alcoholic beer. (laughs) I reckon you better stick to arrowroot tea and a desperate nomadic existence like the rest of us. People, I'm a home brewer. I know how to make alcohol. (gasps) Oh, 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 it can't be done. Come with me if you want the beer. Okay, I'm going to need some big plastic buckets. He is the chosen one. The prophecies say that he's going to get us wasted. Someone start heating water. And then- From the creators of Northern Brewer, the people who brought you massive selection and superior customer service comes the home brewer. I'm Jamel Zanishev, and in addition to my work on the Brewing Network, I write the style profile column in every issue of Brew Your Own magazine. Hi, I'm Sean Paxton, and when I'm not prepping for the home brewed chef on the Brewing Network, you can find me writing articles on how to cook with your home brew for Brew Your Own magazine. Greetings, cretins. This is John Palmer, and when I'm not writing for Brew Your Own, I'm reading it. John Palmer, Sean Paxton, Jamil Zanishev. If you love listening to them on the Brewing Network, you'll love reading their articles, tips, and recipes in the pages of Brew Your Own magazine. 
Join Jamil, John, and Sean eight times a year in Brew Your Own. And when you subscribe to BYO on the Brewing Network website, half of your subscription price goes right back to the BN to support great beer and food programming. So sign up for Brew Your Own magazine through the BN website today so you can listen and read your way to better homebrew. Have you ever dreamed of attending the World Brewing Academy? This year, thanks to Lalamond and Anstar, one lucky brewer will make that dream a reality for free. Lalamond and Danstar invite you to enter the Beer School 2015 contest. One lucky grand prize winner will receive fully paid tuition to the 2015 World Brewing Academy web-based concise course in brewing technology worth almost $4,000. From now until December 13th, 2014, every Danstar yeast packet you use is your ticket to enter. Visit danstaryeast.com for the details and to print your official entry form. There's no limit on the number of times you can enter, so get brewing with Dan Star and get your entries in to the Dan Star 2015 Beer School Contest. Whether you want to build your home brewing skills or build a career as a professional brewer, this course will change the way you think of beer and brewing. Enter at danstaryeast.com and get the dry yeast advantage with Dan Star and Lalamond Premium Brewing Yeast and enter to win. The biggest innovation in brewer's yeast. In 125 years, is here. Yeast that has never been exposed to the environment. See it for yourself at NHC in Grand Rapids. Pure yeast implementation. White Labs. Hi, I'm Jason Harris, the proud owner here at Keystone Homebrew Supply. We're thrilled to be entering our 20th year of supplying this great industry. And to show you, the Brewing Network Army, how much we appreciate your support, we're offering you 10% off your first order on our website, keystonehomebrew.com. Just use coupon code BNARMY at checkout, and I'll get your order out the same day. My goal at Keystone Homebrew Supply has always been to have a complete supply of everything a brewer could want. When you place your order online or when you come into our store, it's our goal to have everything on your list and more. One aspect of KeystoneHomebrew.com that we're really excited about is the ability to fulfill customers' exact grain bills. Do you hate to wait? Keystone Homebrew Supply can get your precious yeast and hops to you within just one day if you live between Connecticut and Virginia and within two days east of the Mississippi. KeystoneHomebrew.com I'm Jason Harris and I approve this message. To the beer guys that make other beer guys look like wine guys. Brew strong. All right. We're going to get to Mo Brew in just a bit, but uh, John, one more question from the email pool. Okay. Oh, you want me to read one? Ah, gotcha. yes. Okay. Um, let's see. That one. <laughs> I'm glad you're prepared, John. Shuffle well, the... you know, I want to find a good one if I'm only going to read one. John, shuffle um, the papers real close to the mic. It's it's good effect for the listeners. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Yes, we actually use real paper here at the Brain Network. Nothing but the finest. That's 20 pounds. Okay, bar. well, keeping with the... 96 brightness that John's the, using. Uh, elements of uh, basic brewing uh, theme that seems to be going along at the moment. Um, or I'm pretending there is. So this is from Dyslexic Alchemist, and he says, Brewmasters, is there any significance to the inch of water suggested to be maintained above the grain bed during sparging? Would the work quality or mash efficiency change if all the sparge water was added once the grain bed was set instead of adding it at the laudering rate? Um, yes. 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 Uh, uh. That, that inch of water over the grain bed is is... Uh, I put that in How to Brew because I wanted to get people to maintain the fluidi- fluidity of the bed. Um, if they were to allow the the top of the green bed to become exposed to the air and then start sprinkling sparge water on top of that, um, as some early texts had at least not disallowed as a, as a possibility, um, the, the problem is that you can compact the grain bed, the whole thing will settle, 
and you will really start channeling the water down the sides of the water ton, and you won't end up watering your grain bed at all. Um, once that grain bed gets compacted, you can't flow water through it very well, and you're not going to rinse your sugars uh, during sparging. So that's the purpose of the inch above was just a you know a safety zone to help uh, maintain the fluidity of the bed, the the flow through the bed. Um, once so, once you have that condition, um, it really doesn't matter whether you have all of your sparge water above that inch or if you're just maintaining that in, inch during laudering. That's that's how my my thinking on it. Well, there's also um, you know. <clears throat> um, I mean, depending on how 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 you get the uh, the water in, if you you know essentially mix all your sparge water in with the grains, I think you're going to get a slightly different result than if you uh, lay it all in on the top. Okay. Yeah. And I think um, I think what you're saying about uh, you know a dry dry bed versus uh, you know keeping a wet bed. Um, you know, there's, there's one thing, but, um, you know, if you're going to do more than that, uh, I would just be careful about, um, you know, uh, diluting the, the sugars up throughout the whole column versus, you know, if you, if you, if you're draining the, the word out continuously and replacing the top inch with uh, fresh water, it tend, I, I, you know, Potentially, you could get a slightly better extract than if you mix the whole thing in with water, yeah. or you let the the sugars start to mix in with the top uh, the the water over the top of the bed. But I mean, it's such a, a small thing. I don't know. Yeah, uh, not a large difference in well, extraction and, efficiency, but and some. people have such such crappy sparging practices that yeah. when they batch sparge, they actually uh, get uh, better results because when they're they're normally sparging, fly sparging, they're channeling and they're they're just getting horrible efficiency. And so when they batch sparge, all of a sudden it goes up, and they're like, "Oh, look, batch sparging is better than fly sparging." Because, well, in your case, yes, because you weren't fly sparging, right? Um, and you had a you know like a bad false bottom or something like that. Yeah. So uh, batch sparging can be much better for you know um, when you're going to. Uh, Quick and easy. Yeah, if you're going to you know better equipment and uh, you know better uh, process, then uh, fly sparging can you know, might be might be the better choice. All right, let's get to uh, Mo Brewer, Kansas City. What's happening, Mo Brewer? Hey guys, I just uh, brewed my first batch of lager after brewing for two and a half years. Uh, it's your your recipe from Brewing Classic Styles for the Munich Hellas and. Uh, tasted delicious, but I had a question about when to carbonate it in the keg. Um, so uh, it fermented down in three weeks, and uh, this is week four, and I've been slowly, slowly uh, bringing it down about two degrees every day, and it's almost to 40 degrees. Um, I wanted to know if I was thinking about lagering it for a few weeks, should I carbonate it uh uh, before I lager it, or should I wait until the lagering, lagering period is done before I carbonate it uh, in the keg, or does it really matter? I would keep enough pressure on it that uh, you know no oxygen is getting in as you're as you're lowering the temperature. But um, so here here's the thing: um, in 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 if if you believe that the yeast are are having uh, an impact on the beer, then that's why you do the slow lowering of the temperature as you did. That's why you also don't drop it below forty degrees Fahrenheit because you want those yeasts to still be active, and you keep it down there. And then um, you're also not going to want to add CO two because CO two suppresses the yeast activity. So you want that yeast activity, but you want it cold. Um, so I would not carbonate. If you don't believe in the yeast are actually having a, a whole lot of effect and you are willing to just, you know, you want to just 
drop out, uh, uh, you know, some of the hot particles and, uh, uh, you know, uh, alpha acids and things like that. And that's what's giving you your smoother lager character. Then um, it doesn't matter and you can just carbonate right away and, and just crash cool. Does that answer the question? Oh, hold on. I put them on hold. Did it answer your question, man? Yeah, thanks a lot. That's great. Oh, there you go. Uh, somehow I don't believe him. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it sounded yeah. sarcastic. Yeah, uh, yeah whatever you say. Advice. Sure, fine. <laughs> Fucking blow me off. What the hell? <laughs> What's the matter with you guys? I call in, and, and this is the answer you give me? What a pile of shit. <laughs> I want my money back. Uh, Mobro, let us know what happens with it. Let us know how it turns out. No, honestly, does that does that does that make sense, or do, does that answer the question, or or you got more? No, no, that makes sense. Uh, when I was listening on the phone, it was kind of staticky, so it's kind of hard to hear what you were saying. Yeah, um, no, I've actually, uh, you know, I've I've read or heard somewhere that like uh, like carbon dioxide is it toxic to the yeast, or but you said it suppresses yeast growth, so I should just uh, it, it suppresses the activity. It. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it you know toxic uh, you know just about anything is toxic to any living organism if you put it in a high enough concentration you know if if you lie down in a bathtub full of water uh, you know water's toxic to you you're gonna die um, you know it's same thing with with carbon dioxide if you get high enough carbon dioxide where you're at you're gonna die um, so it it's it it does uh, suppress yeast activity so. Um, you you just want to I, I I would hold off on it since you yeah. you put all the effort into lowering the temperature over time. Yeah, uh, my my theory on lagering is that you know it's mostly a clarification process, um, and if you're if as you say the hellas tastes great right now after three weeks, that tells me that the yeast have done their job when it comes to conditioning the beer and you know cleaning up acetal acetaldehyde and um other you know um off flavors um i don't know what the clarity of your beer is like at the moment but uh if you know if the beer flavor is fine that sounds like fermentation is done uh there's probably no reason not to simply crash cool it and carbonate it well, uh, uh, there, not, I shouldn't have said crash cool but yeah there there's one reason not to crash cool is um I did see a study where um, if you actually crash cool the yeast, it will express more of uh, some of those ester-forming compounds that they have in them uh, yeah. at the end of fermentation. I'm not sure how long, if, if you leave it long enough, I wonder if that's still the fact. But uh, this study was showing like, you know, like a 50% increase in, in ester formation or 30%, whatever it was. Uh, it's in the book. Um but uh, I thought, yeah, I thought that was kind of interesting um, that uh, crash cooling could express more more esters. So, uh, you know, the, the the chilling could could help there, the slow chilling. All right, have we beat this question to death? I yeah, think so. A lot, guys. No problem. Thanks for taking the time to co- call in. Uh, and the rest of you folks, you know, next time uh, we're doing a show, don't hesitate to call in. We're actually now taking calls. We haven't for like uh, seven years, but uh, now we are. <laughs> and uh, the number is 888 Modern technology beer. is fine. Next time you're listening. Uh, also, make sure to check out our fine sponsors. Check out uh, Blickman Engineering. Go go there to their site, Blickman Engineering, Blickman with two N's. And uh, uh, make sure if you get a chance... Tell them how much you appreciate them paying for the show so you don't have to. Uh, check out the Brewing Network store. Lots of goodies there. You can buy uh, shirts, hats, books, glassware, uh, just about everything. And when you do, it goes to the bottom line of the Brewing Network and pays for the show so you don't have to pay for it. So rather than paying for shows per download, why don't you go buy some goodies from the Brewing Network store? Get yourself some goodies and continue to get free shows. I think that that's a clever idea. Until then, Bruce Strong, everybody. Bruce Strong. <laughs>